Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, cancel culture continues daily, and our next biggest victim, I mean, I don't know why there's a list of victims, but we're getting a list of victims now. So, the next person that's been victimized is David Starkley. Oh, I, David is a mad lad. He is a mad lad. I love him for being a mad lad, because he just doesn't care. Starkey? No, that's David Starkey. It doesn't matter. Um, David is a historian and he is a very, very wise older man. He is... He's got a very choice selective of words, I say. I do admire every time he speaks. Last time, first time I maybe saw him speak lie. Uh, second time I saw him speak was during the Saga of a Card when he was on that channel as well. For the first time I saw him, he was talking about the S&P being like the Nazi party. Kind of true, but we'll show that in a second. But David, um, he's an old timer. He has his very, very specific way of words. And he's very aware of what's going on just now in the council culture and everything else. And he is a very, very sorry, proud uh, British man. And he's very proud of the Empire, like myself, is very proud of everything that we've achieved through our history. It's not like he doesn't know there was bad things too. He, we were both aware of that. But the success of Empire probably made more success for the, today. So anyway, what about David? So David was on a, he was an interview with uh, Darling Grimes, and we're going to talk about that guy eventually, but uh, he ended up saying a, quite a very controversial line, and well, let's say David said something quite offensive to, well, the first time you hear about it, it would make sense, well, actually it wouldn't make any sense to be honest. And then the second time, if you think about what he says, it kind of does make sense. But the left doesn't use common sense mind or think about what people say. Like, you could say something really offensive. And it won't matter if you apologize or say anything to the mob. It doesn't make a difference. You've said it and you're just as bad as the fucking devil or Hitler. Probably Trump. So he said something I mentioned about the Nazi party. Uh, so I'm going Linda, to show you were in the papers at the weekend, weren't you talking all about Scotland? You made some comparisons they, between the SNP and Nazis. Let me just uh, remind our viewers who may not have had a chance to, to uh, see the article, some of the quotes. Uh, what are the show. points of comparison? You say, well, we have a political movement that has a single historic explanation for why your country is facing such terrible oppression. It's either Versailles or the Treaty of Union. You have a particular group of people who are responsible for this. It is either the English or the Jews going on to say you have a symbol, the twisted cross, the saltire or the swastika. You have a passionate belief in economic self-sufficiency known by the Nazis as autarky and the Scots as oil. And you also have the propensity of your elderly and middle-aged male supporters to expose their knees. Um, it's created a great deal of offence to many people in Scotland. Are you sorry for the offence it's caused? No, of course not. Um, we have this awful, idiotic PC politics. What we've got to recognise, I said nothing about Scotland. I said a great deal about the SNP. The SNP is a virulently nationalist party of a type that we have not had in Britain. It models itself on the continental extreme nationalist movements of the 1930s. That's when it's founded. It's time we call things by their proper names. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not saying they're about to set up concentration camps. I'm not going to say that we're going to see a Kristallnacht of English businesses in Edinburgh. Of course we're not. But the resemblances are striking and are worrying. Now we've spent years fussing in Britain about complete minor fringe things like the BMP and whatever they are nothing compared with uh, the Scottish Nationalist Party which has seized control of a whole country and is pushing this kind of radical agenda they talk about civic nationalism the word civic is merely a fig leaf or perhaps bearing in mind that it's Scotland a jockstrap you say they seized control 50% of the population voted for them 
Yes, of course. But, sorry, lots of people have voted for very unpleasant leaders. I shan't mention the word Hitler. I mean, the sorry, democracy doesn't always get it right. You, you, but comparing the, the saltire to the swastika, that's not the SNP symbol of saltire. It's, it's the symbol of Scotland. It's, it's the national symbol. Uh, sorry, the, the, the saltire, of the course it is, the but, it's been, symbol, but, it's been, it? but it's been, but, but the, 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 the saltire, the saltire is of course an, a, a national symbol, it's the flag of St Andrew, I do know these things, but it has been appropriated by the SNP in a very particular way. Look, I mean, look at those scenes uh, in Glasgow at the time of the independence vote, and listen, you know, again, listen to the cybernats if you disbelieve me. So, um, yeah, you got the idea there of how he would word things, because this is how the kind of guy you have to be with him when you talk to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the culture nowadays is probably less accepting of the way he thinks in that nowadays, which, frankly, is quite sad, where we can't just accept whoever you are that's based on your character. It's only based on your skin. Funny that. So, let's go talk about what he said. Now, if this fucks me up, oh well, there's other things. But, this is what the guy said that caused him all the trouble I'm about to mention here. He says, during this interview, slavery was not genocide. Otherwise, why wouldn't there be so many damn blacks in Africa or in Britain, would there? Okay. With that w word itself, it's bad. It, it, it's really bad to say the way it was. I think it was like a bit of humor he was trying to do there. But it, it makes sense if you look into it and uh, like understand where it comes from. And everyone seems to be very offensive about slavery nowadays. I mean, they didn't give a shit before, but uh, there you go. So, what I would take from this, it is true in a context, because putting the word slavery and genocide into the same thing are completely different things. Because genocide is an, is an eradication of a certain ethnic group, a certain uh, group of people, to kill them all on purpose. Slavery, however, despite we know they all died in the ships, which was sad, obviously, slavery doesn't perform genocide. What the Nazis did to the Jewish population was genocide. The idea was not to make slaves out of them. They weren't to benefit the economy in any sort of fashion. They weren't there to um, make things better for the Germans. The Germans wanted them fucking dead. Then we compare them to the slaves of the African trade and the slavery. Slaves were designed to do menial work without getting paid so they could benefit, like, so they could make cotton and all that for, pe you know, the white people and so on in the economies. When you put the words genocide and slavery into the same context, it doesn't make sense. But it doesn't matter. David's whole career has pretty much just turned upside down within a night or within the few hours of this actually being mentioned because there's even oh, his own publisher Harper Collins UK they've even sent out a Twitter Twitter sorry saying that they don't support him either because they, they can't condemn themselves with it because this is ca what cancel culture does, make sure your life is ruined. So this here what Harper Collins has to say. The views expressed by David Starkley is recent interview of Abhorned and we unreservedly condemn them. Our last book with the author, with the author sorry, was in 2010 and we will not be publishing further books with him and we are reviewing his existing back this in the light of this comments and views. So... Even his publisher has gone out the way to demonize him, and it's quite crazy. And you've, you've got the usual people who don't like him. Um, you've got Tommy Young here, sorry, Toby Young saying, 
This virtually everything everyone in Britain has done is laced is, is history, its museums, its monuments, its statues and universities, its criminal justice system, its government, etc. When should we cancel David Starkly for being racist? Or isn't he just like everyone else? Well, well, well. Let's just call everyone racist. Like Piers Morgan does when he doesn't understand his own logic. Because Piers Morgan has to be a Carlin about everything. Like disgusting racism by Starkly. Shameful. In endorsed by Nodding Dog. You fucking idiot, Pierce. I mean, sorry, you have to be a bloody idiot with this stuff. But then you got Steve Khan, you know, the successful mayor that does nothing wrong. Diversity is strength for the member. We're the most successful multicultural democracy in the world. We have much to be proud of. Oh, sure. But David Starkley lays his comments. So many damn blacks. Oh, that comment was the worst bit? Okay, sure, okay. We uh, we are the mind of the applying values that still exist. Wow, it, it it's really, really cringeworthy to see that. It's a fucking joke. It, it, it is a joke. Because you got all these lefty people just hating on him for what he said. And, you know, Robert Preston... It looks like he's getting uh, banned from Cambridge or he's getting acquired damage from the Cambridge University because this, see, this is what they said here. And look at that, that multi-colours. That says everything, doesn't it? <sighs> Fuck, it says everything, the colours, doesn't it? I think I'm starting to hate universities more and more these days. We have terminated David Starkley's position as a visiting professor with immediate effect. This comments are completely unacceptable and totally go against the university and our community values. Are you fucking kidding me, Cambridge? Are you fucking kidding me? This is your two-faced again. Because I, I haven't talked about this yet, but it's bad for David to say this thing about slaves and but it's okay for a professor sorry a, a woman that wasn't a professor and then you give her the p woman's professor scholarship for saying all white lives don't matter yeah remember that yeah double fucking standards cambridge this is why nobody fucking likes universities because the woman said White lives don't matter, but it's okay to show on the white people because it says here from the article here following that thing by Cambridge He has been withdrawn with a media effect Stressing he will not tolerate racism, but then it's double standards when the woman who says white lives don't matter which is racist in its cell Gets a scholarship and gets a professor professor scholarship what the fuck? So let's talk about the guy who did the interview, uh, Darling Grimes. He's a, I would say he's a very lefty conservative. So he kind of, he's kind of like a Prosecco Tory in a way. But he, he, well, he gave the interview. Like, if you're an interview, you should know what these kind of characters are. But he already gave out a statement I after this, saying, you know, he condemned what he did was a mistake but the way the guy got treated was fucking horrible but he wrote this thing here about the interview and he said hand on heart i wasn't engaged enough in this interview as i should have been it was going without saying that least in uk does not support or condone mr david stockley's words i'm very new to the interviewer show rather than interviewer wise yeah and I should have robustly questioned Dr. Starkley about his comments. That's fine. However, it's on the BBC, ITV and Sky News or on YouTube. No interviewer is responsible for views expressed by their guests. And the session in the UK, you always find the unfiltered options, allowing the audience to make up their own mind. That said, in future, I can promise that there will be a host who is much more willing to challenge those opinions. There is a reason for ways you can do interviewing like that. There's nothing wrong with 
the fact that you the way you did the interview, there was nothing wrong with that at all. Because everyone makes mistakes during interviews. Look what happened between Ben Shapiro and Andrew Neal. That that was fucking hilarious. That's when you get an interview long because Andrew Neal nails it on the head. But you shouldn't be you know, you should be a bit ready for what who's coming on the show or who you're gonna to talk to. Because if I am going to be doing to anyone that's talking, I have my own little contract to say I am not responsible for what people say. Even though I ask the question, if it's them who say the question or answer in a certain manner that's disapproval to the audience, I'm not responsible for it. Every person is responsible for what they say. But, like, what happened after this was really horrible what happened to him it, this shouldn't have happened to him at all this happened on the radio for uh six o'clock news and the way they describe um the guy is horrible this this way should never have happened to Diane grimes Dr David Starkey's long been known for stirring up controversy. This isn't the first time he's used racist and offensive language. His latest remarks came during a 50-minute online video with a right-wing commentator, Darren Grimes, who describes his website as a safe space for racist and homophobic views. Yeah, it, it, it was really bad. And after hearing this, Darren Grimes has actually started a legal... Uh, proceedings against the BBC of what they said about him during the BBC for six o'clock news because calling him right wing when he's on the lefty side okay for me that's all it was but to call him what they called him in that clip there that's gross man that that's not the way to do it yeah there's one thing of him getting the long kind of guy for him to say the long words but then turning around and giving this clap, I hope the Defender BBC and everything else goes for him on this one because they fucking deserve it. The BBC deserves whatever will come to it because it was really bad, you know, this to happen to him in the first place. It was terrible. But we can only hope, we can only hope that David will not apologise for what he has said because he should be a true honourable Brit and not bow to the mob. Fuck! Damn idiot. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video to the very end. That means I'm excellent for this channel. I mean, if you want to support this channel even further, please be sure to like, share and subscribe this video or the channel in any other sort of way. And if you want to support this channel even further than that, which would be appreciated anyway, please be sure to click any links below for alternative means where we can get more content out to you guys. And remember, hail the Empire!